Hi everyone, I make Excel and PowerPoint templates to help people get ahead in their careers and get the most out of their business and their organization. This one in particular we're looking at is the mind map. And the best part is you don't need to pay for any extra software in order to create a mind map. You can actually do it all in PowerPoint. The idea behind a mind map is breaking things down into smaller and smaller pieces. So for example, as you can see here, we're starting with the core idea and that could be anything that could be a core feature in your your product uh, in your organization or that you're wanting to deliver or it could be just a core you know brainstorming idea that you're wanting to branch off into other ideas as well um, and this is just a nice way that we've broken it down in PowerPoint but how do we use this as an example well here we have our blank sheet and in order to start we're just going to select a circle hold shift so that we make a perfect circle and that's going to be in the center of our of our chart uh, and what we're going to do let's look at design thinking I'm sure you've heard of design thinking and and what that involves um, but let's break it down using a mind map and really delve into what design thinking actually is now you can actually edit the text of this circle directly as well and that's probably the easier way to do it now that we've got the core idea that we're wanting to explore, we can control C and control V and just get another one of these. And we'll just hold shift as we shrink that down a little bit and reduce the text size. And we're going to look into the different, uh, different ideas around design thinking. So the first one is empathize. And we're going to look into this in a little bit more detail. We're going to break it down even further, as you'll see. And uh, as you can see, the, the words have just wrapped around a little bit. So we're going to select that and go to format shape and the text options and uh, to see the uh, the margins that we've got here we can just re either reduce those completely or just leave it a very small amount of margin so that that does not wrap around if we say control v uh, control c and control v to copy and paste again then part of the other another part of design thinking is to test with our audience and if we take that and copy that across again then another part is to prototype with our audience one more idea is to ideate with our with the people that we're working with and the final idea is to define things like defining the scope or defining those requirements directly from our customers now as you'll see we can actually change the canvas here as well and that's part of the beauty of working with powerpoint if we go to design and our slide size we actually want this to be more of a more of a square so if we ensure fit there we go now we've got a, a little bit more room to work with and uh, that's going to be really powerful. We can increase that in size using custom slide size in the future if we need to. Now we do want all of these different, uh, these extra ideas. We just want them to be, to stand out as their own ideas. So we're just going to color them ever so slightly, a little bit differently so that each, uh, each train of thought can have its own uh, color. And part of linking these together is if we go to insert and we're wanting to insert a shape, we're wanting to just add a curved arrow connector. And the reason we want it to be curved is because this way it will just, uh, it will move really nicely when we're moving our other shapes around. And those two things will move together. We can uh, increase the weight of this outline just so it's a little bit, uh, little bit larger. And we can even keep that color because it's quite nice or we can change it to anything that we please. And let's go ahead and add the rest of our arrows to, uh, to link up all of our other ideas. Now, how else do we want to break down design thinking? Well, what we're going to need now, and you can use any shape for this that you prefer. You can have more circles if you really want to. For us, we're going to use a, a rounded rectangle and maybe we'll increase the roundness of it as well, just so it fits in quite nicely. But we do want this to be the same color scheme uh, in the same train of thought. And then we can also use the arrows to carry those across. And we do want to format the shape and we just want to reduce those margins in the same way as we did with our other items and our other, other circles too. Now we can right click and edit text. And when we're empathizing, we want to learn about the audience. Now we can copy and paste that one. And what else do we want to do? We want to observe and interview. Also part of empathizing, we want to ask questions and listen, of course. And now you can see if we do move this circle around, it will move with the other items that we're looking at. And that's the beauty of working with PowerPoint and that it does connect directly up. So that's our empathize stream of thought. But what do we want for our test stream of thought? We'll copy one of these, mark it down, and we'll change uh, so that it does match that color scheme as well. And again, you can use any color scheme that you do prefer. We'll grab one of these arrows. And as part of testing, we really want to use user testing and surveys. 
we also want to gather our learnings. And as part of our testing, we also want to iterate. So we're gathering that and reusing that to put back into our tests. And we also want to scale because we want that to go among as many people as we possibly can to gather as much feedback as we possibly can. Now, what do we want with our prototyping train of thought? Well, first of all, let's just change the color so that it matches our nice color scheme for that train of thought. And when we're prototyping, we want to act small and fail fast because we want to get all of that feedback and put that back into the next attempt. Speaking of feedback, we want to gather feedback using our prototype. And by prototyping, we also want to learn from our users. They're seeing and feeling the item uh, or the product or the service, and that way uh, they can use that uh, so we're learning from the users as they're using it. Now we get to look into ideate and defining the last two parts of design thinking. So for ideate, we want to brainstorm and select. When we're ideating, we want to experiment. So that's part of prototyping. And when we're ideating, we want to come up with many solutions as well. Some of them may not be good, some of them may not may be great, um, but the idea is to come up with as many as we can and uh, that way we can start prioritizing them or even weeding out the ones that we don't want to work with. Now lastly, when, it, when we're defining the requirements and the scope, we want to question our assumptions. We may not necessarily know what the customer wants even though we think we know. We have to question the things that we know. We also want to define our scope. What have we learned out of all of these tests and what is the scope that we're going to look into? And of course, based on that, we're looking for patterns and insights. And as you can see now, we've gone into the whole idea behind design thinking, where we're empathizing, uh, ideating, prototyping, testing, and then defining the scope, uh, defining the outputs. And all of those we've broken down into, you know, into steps and things that we can do when we're performing or going through the steps of design thinking, all using a mind map and all designed in PowerPoint, which most organizations and people, almost everyone will have access to and won't have to buy any extra software in order to do it. And it's turned out quite beautiful, I think. And I hope you've enjoyed spending the time with me. I've really enjoyed checking this out and spending time with you creating this beautiful mind map in PowerPoint. I hope to see you in the next couple of videos. Bye for now.